today we would be finally solving our first problem on codeshare hopefully you would get some valuable insights on how to code out your approach and we'll also have a look at some of the mistakes beginners make we'll be implementing the solution in three different languages c++ java and python as they are currently the three most widely used for cp so let's head over to the practice and learn session practice problems by difficulty level so we'll be solving a problem from the easy section although don't worry it's almost the same as a beginner problem then let's sort it by the number of submissions so let's open the problem i've already opened it on new tab so let me simplify the problem for you we are asked to write a brute force approach so just code out whatever is given no need to think of any observations or anything and we need to find the answer to the life the universe and everything more precisely we need to take in some small numbers from the input and then we need to output the same back again and we need to stop processing after we get the number 42 which was described by douglas adams in one of his books the hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy as the answer to the life universe and everything so this is the problem and let's have a look at the sample input and output for a better understanding so we have one so we output that back we get two we output that back again then 88 we again output 88 but as soon as we hit 42 we stop there and we do not process anything after that so this is the problem and now let's code it out first in c++ as it's the preferred language for competitive programming due to its super fast runtime and the standard template library which includes a lot of data structures and algorithms already built in so let's hit the submit button and this will bring up the code shift id and make sure that you have your language selected as c++ now if you are familiar with include conio.h and in the end instead of return 0 the get command then you perhaps work with the turbo c++ compiler but one thing you need to understand is that codeshift instead uses the standard c++ compiler which is the gcc compiler So if you were wondering why your code perfectly runs in your local machine in Turbo C++ but fails to execute on CodeShift the difference in compilers is perhaps the reason So let's start with the code so this is the code and the main logic i've used is i have an integer variable n and then i run an infinite loop from which we would break out at whenever we hit the number 42 so in the loop i take the input for n i check if it's 42 if yes then i break out otherwise i output n back so this logic should hopefully work and let's enable the custom input and pass in i've already passed in the sample input as mentioned in the question Now let's hit the run button and let's wait for the output. So it got successfully executed, no errors, but the output is somewhat strange. Is our logic incorrect? Well, if you carefully observe, no, our logic is in fact correct. For one, we get one. For two, we get two, and then for eighty-eight, we get eighty-eight, and after forty-two, we stop. the only difference as you might have guessed is that in the problem in the sample output we were expected to output each number on a new line whereas here we are outputting everything on the same line so let's change that and make it c out n and then end l or backslash n now if we run our code we get them on a new line which exactly matches with the output given in the problem so we can now hit the submit button and get our code evaluated by the online judge
so yes we get a correct answer and it executed really fast as you can see so that's how you do it in c++ so let's change our language to java now and this gives us the template for java with a lot of things already imported as well as a lot of things already set up so it's asking us to place our code here so let's start out with the code So here's the code. What I've basically done is defined an integer variable n and also set up a scanner named SC, which takes which helps us take the input. And an important thing to note is that you don't need to import the scanner here. Why? Because it's already imported here. The asterisk in import means to import everything. So from the java.utilities, our scanner has already been imported. Then I run an infinite loop and I take the next input as for, for n and I check if n is equal to 42, then I exit. Otherwise, I print out n and make sure to use the function print ln as given in the output format here. We need to print each integer in a new line. So this is the code and I have already checked custom input with a sample input pasted and let's run our code now. So we get a runtime error saying NZEC, which stands for non-zero exit code. Although we are getting the correct output, but still getting an error is not a correct solution. So let's see what wrong, what are we doing wrong? So as you can see, I am exiting whenever I get N as 42 and I exit with minus one, denoting an unsuccessful execution, which is causing the error. And as we and as we can comprehend from the error NZEC, which stands for non-zero exit code, which means that our program did not return zero in the end. Right? So here, instead of minus one, we should exit with zero, which will now prevent the error. So let's run the code again. So yes, this time it got successfully executed and we have the correct output and another thing i wanted to convey is you can also use the break command instead of system.exit but anyways both of them work so now let's hit the submit button and hope to get our solution get accepted by the online judge so yes we got a correct answer and that's how you do it in java so let's change our language to Python now. So here's the program. I'm running an infinite loop, taking the input for n. And if I get 42, then I break out. Otherwise, I keep on printing n back. So now let's run our code. This is a complaint with a lot of Python programmers, especially those coming from platforms like HackerRank, is that whenever they run their code, they always get this runtime error saying NZEC which stands for non-zero exit code and the solution to this is somewhat stupid all you have to do is pass in some input to your program as i mentioned in the previous video while explaining how to use the ide i mentioned that if our program is simply not a hello world program and takes some input then it's important to pass in some input against which your program could be run 
right so let's enable the custom input and here i've already passed in now if we run the code we should hopefully not get any error because when our program was asking for the input not passing one was what yields the error so yes it got successfully executed and we are getting the correct output of 1 2 and then 88 as well so let's hit the submit button now and check if our solution was correct wait why are we getting the wrong answer verdict let's see what we had actually done so in the output we have enter a number 1 then enter a number 2 enter a number 88 then enter a number and this time we are not asking for any input right but if you carefully see in the sample output it's simply 1 2 and 88 and we are expected to output this exactly the same so that's why this output that our program is generating as well as the expected output for the problem is miss is a mismatch which is causing the wrong answer and the reason to why you shouldn't use these lies in why should you use this ask yourselves why do you have these statements like enter a number or enter some string well that is because so that we come to know that here the program is asking for the input right but CodeShift doesn't check your solutions manually. Instead, there's an online judge which tests your solution. So there's no point outputting these kind of diagnostic statements, right? So let's remove them. And this time we are getting the exact output. So now let's hit the submit button and hope to get our solution accepted so yes we get the correct answer i am feeling like a god after solving a code shift problem in just five lines of code but using the cheat called python so that's how you do it so thanks for watching this is bharat singla from code shift signing off for now and i'll see you next time